You know, we want our athletes to be humble. We, you know, we tell them when they get to the end zone, act like you've been there before. You know, don't act like a fool, pointing to yourself, separating yourself from the rest of the pack of your teammates. Look for somebody to celebrate. We're not saying don't celebrate, we're saying celebrate with your buddies. But you know, we weren't born that way. We were born really to point the finger at ourselves and to say, look at me, watch me, what's in it for me? I don't think always our first words coming out of the room were uh, dada or mama. I think it's, what about me? What about me? <laughs> and it just seems that we seem to ask that question in a more mature way as we get older. It's always about us. The sin nature gravitates to us. What about me? Luke 9.24 says, he who seeks to save his life will lose it, but he who loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. If we're trying to save our life and build ourselves up because of pride, because we want honors, we want to glorify ourselves, we're actually losing our life. We're going against God. The Bible says God opposes the proud. Do you want to be in opposition with God? <laughs> it seems like we must. Because if we take that scripture seriously, we are saying, yep, God, bring it on. I'm gonna fight you for glory. In fact, I'm gonna see who's the, f if, if, if you had a cookie jar at home and you had cookies in there and they were called glory cookies and you were the first one to get in there and see if you could snatch one. And we don't take the whole cookie jar. We used to take one at a time. We don't wanna look that proud or that boastful. We just do a little bit. We should think a little bit in there, a little bit in there. It's like we're trying to dig our hand in there before God gets the glory. And we just want to take one. Oh, we're not taking it all. I'm just taking a little for myself. We have little ways where we brag about ourselves, where we kind of get the arrow pointed back to us, where we want to take care of ourselves, where we cover our own rear ends when there's trouble. We take care of ourselves first. And that's not what the scripture teaches. And one of the things we did, uh, interestingly, uh, it was a very humbling thing, but uh, we got uh, some of our players together and we did a foot washing uh, in the name of Jesus. It was very humbling to be a part of that, to wash another guy's feet. You know, Jesus did that at the, at the Last Supper. He washed his disciples' feet. He said, you know, I, I want you to, to, you know, they had just been, been arguing about who's gonna be the greatest, you know? Uh, pretty typical argument, really. I mean, it doesn't sound like that belongs in a Christian circle, but it's there all the time. We just have ways to disguise it in the body of Christ, but it's always there. And, and really to find a humble person who's willing to do what Jesus did and to wash dirty feet and to say, you know what, I love you so much that I will take you under, under my realm and I will pour myself out and I will, I will bow down in submission to you and I will give way to you and put myself on the back burner. Wow. You know, it, wouldn't it be interesting if after a team won the world championship or whatever sport they played in and they were in a, in a ticker tape parade, you know, in the middle of a big city that they represent and, and, and all of a sudden those, the, those players got out of the car and, and went over to the housing projects where really poor people lived and pulled out a, a bucket of soap and water and began to scrub toilets. And instead of going in front of the media talking about how they won the Super Bowl or whatever, they began to scrub toilets for people who nobody considers very important. Wouldn't that be like radical? Wouldn't that be just crazy? But that's exactly how we're called to live. We're to be scrubbing toilets on this planet in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not to be choosing the places where all the esteemed people are and kissing people's tails who are important. We are to minister to those who nobody wants to deal with. We are to give to people who can't give back. Coach, I think it's really important for you to look at some of the players on your team who don't get maybe a lot of playing time, who don't get a lot of uh, you know media attention, and you put your arms around them. I've always remembered coaches who have done that with me. When I was a guy that maybe wasn't gonna make the team or wasn't gonna work out well for me or I wasn't gonna get playing time, I've always remembered the coach that put his arm around me anyhow and made time for me. Um, it, just something like that re, puts you in a position where you're, you're promoting humility into the culture that you live in with the team. And then when you do that, you get an opportunity to share with them where that comes from. It comes from your relationship with Jesus Christ because 
The scriptures tell us that God left heaven. The, literally, God, God left heaven and became flesh, became a man. He humbled himself and made himself of a man and, and literally went through everything, all the torture and all the, the junk that we have to go through in a, in a mega way. And then he went to a cross and he died for us. I mean, he didn't, you know, humility isn't pulling us up to where he's at. He came down and got underneath us and washed our feet and saved our souls. And we're called to, to create an environment of humility. And it starts, first of all, with the death of ourself. Not the physical death, but the death to the self, that, that we would cru be crucified for Christ. And it's not I that live anymore, it's Christ who lives his life through me. And so when people see me, hopefully they see the living Christ living through me. Sadly, I'm, I'm guilty like you, coach. Sometimes they see me and they see me promoting myself and they see me taking care of myself. And, and I, the only, there's only one response to that. Lord, I'm sorry. Would you forgive me? Would you forgive me for exalting myself? Would you forgive me for my pride? And to die right then to yourself. And God will forgive you. And then to repent, to say, no more. I don't want to live like that anymore. I'm going to trust that God so not only has my back, but he's got my front, my top, my bottom, my everything, my future. I'm going to trust him so much that I can afford to give everything away to everyone. He challenged the rich young ruler who said, oh, I'm doing all this for you, Lord. And he was proud. God loved him anyhow. Jesus had great compassion on him, but he challenged him. And he gave him the bad news before he gave him the good news. He said, there's one thing that's left. I know you've obeyed all these commandments and so forth, but there's one thing left. You got a lot of money. I'll tell you what you do. Let's sell all your possessions, all these rich things that you have, sell them, take the money, give it to the poor, people who really need it, and then come and follow me. <laughs> the rich young ruler turned him down. You know, I, I'm, I'm that rich young ruler and so aren't you. I think we turn down Jesus every day. I think we turn him down every day in some area of our life. There's some things that we're hanging on to, holding on to, that we count near and dear to us. And you know what, when we're hanging on to these possessions because we want to be exalted and look good in front of the world, we can't really serve the Lord the way we need to. We can't really wash anyone's feet. And so today, it's a great day to die. Die to yourself. It's humility isn't some false thing, oh, I'm nothing, I'm no good or anything. That's, that's false stuff, that's, that's pride. Now, humility is an accurate perception of who God really is and who you really are, who I really am. That God really is the one to be exalted. And that because of his death on the cross, we now have the capacity to die. And because of his resurrection, we now have the capacity to allow, to allow, through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, his new life to live in through us. And with that, part of that great fruit that comes about that is humility. It's a trait from God. You can always tell a person who's living in the Spirit because they truly are humble. They aren't exalting themselves. Let that be a great quality coach. Promote that on your team. However God does it with you, somehow promote humility, a bottoms up kind of a mentality rather than top down. Get underneath your players, get in there with them and show them the love of Christ. Have a great week of humility and asking God to continually dethroning ourselves.